Chris Subramanian is the co-founder of Mob Clicks, which is an ad exchange that connects advertisers and developers. He's with us live from San Francisco. So, Chris, tell me, I mean, cracking the code here, we're talking about uh, being able to have something beyond just promoted tweets. Does cracking the code, though, actually mean getting companies to follow through with money? Because you point out this is, what, 5% of ad spending right now? Yeah, it's actually getting you know closer to to uh, ten percent now of overall online advertising spending for uh, twenty ten. But this is all about advertising getting more personal, and it's the first time you're seeing intent based um, advertising outside of search. Um, and this is where Twitter is able to to coordinate what people's interests are along with advertisers. So the example you give is if I go on my Twitter account and I say, gosh, I want coffee this morning, that somehow that message will then direct companies to me? Well, it, it, gives, it gives companies, it gives advertisers a way to figure out, all right, if, I, if I'm looking for coffee lovers, when people are searching for coffee, I have a way to target those particular users um, within those search results or suggesting, um, you know, specific Twitter accounts, like maybe you'd want to follow the Starbucks Twitter account. Got it. So uh, the, the balance here is where all of this sort of can get jeopardized, right? Because the whole idea of being able to blog is sharing what you're thinking. When it starts to get commercialized, that's when people start to get a little uncomfortable with it. So how does Twitter strike the right balance here? I mean, I think Twitter's done a great job of, of really focusing on driving that consumer engagement with those advertising. Their average you know, CTR on the campaigns they've run so far has been 5%, which is much higher than display advertising is today. And, and I think it's striking the balance between figuring out you know, when to promote specific advertising and making sure that resonates with the audience and not, not pushing ads that, that people are not interested in. So Twitter, they sell promoted trends for $100,000 a day. They've uh, promoted accounts, which is what we've been talking about a, a little bit here with sort of suggesting who you might want to follow. Evan Williams says they want to get to a billion users. They're at 165 million now. What does that critical mass do in terms of changing how they can generate advertising dollars? Because mm -hmm. one of the additional things they're going to be doing is promoted tweets, and one of the big missing, you know, pieces is is a lot of, is leveraging their local information. So knowing when a user is is checking in, having that uh, geolocation, and being able to leverage local advertisers on a self-serve platform, and and being able to connect them to those users. One of the big things that's missing in in the local advertising platforms today is knowing exactly what what application or platform a user is using at that exact location. Isn't and this that what is perfect Foursquare for some, does? Um, it, it's very similar to, to that, So, but being able to tie the local advertising into those check-in locations is going to be, be key. So the, the flaw in this, some would say, is that you can do a lot of these things, uh, I mean you can get on access, you can tweet away as a company for free. So what does paying Twitter do for you? It, it gets you guaranteed reach and awareness and engagement. Um, you know, creating a Twitter account and getting those thousands of followers, it takes a while to create that, you know, viral, viral trend. And this is a way to jumpstart your, your brand and your awareness to that, to that specific audience and community that you want. For example, Coke has spent, you know, has done 20 or 30 different campaigns, a lot of it tied around to the World Cup, and they've been very successful in it. So in looking at some of this research, um, one in five of Twitter's 165 million registered members follow brands or product-related users. Do you think that, beyond the Cokes you just mentioned, that other corporate entities truly understand how to access this kind of outreach in social media? I mean, I think they're learning, learning about how to leverage Twitter, how to leverage you know, Facebook fan pages. You're starting to see those budgets grow tremendously. And when people look at their digital spend, you're starting to see almost 10% of that go to social media. And of that 10%, 50% of that is going towards Facebook. I think you know, Twitter is going to start garnering a lot more of those dollars from those big brands that are looking for ways to connect with, different, uh, connect with their audience. 
Do you have to be on Facebook and Twitter and Foursquare and wherever else? I mean, can you actually go with just one social media property at the moment? You know, I think there, there are different audiences and there are different ways of reaching people for success for a successful brand campaign. You know, I think you definitely need to be on Twitter and on Facebook. All right. Well, we'll see if this ends up uh, paying off the way they'd like for uh, Twitter's executives. I appreciate you giving us your perspective, Chris.